morning. Welcome to Nativity Lutheran Church, Allentown's online worship. Now be coming to you from a variety of homes and put together by Sarah. And I want to say a big thank you to Sarah for compiling all of this and putting it together in a meaningful worship service. A few announcements. First of all, we're going to place the palms outside on the benches outside the church and you may pick those up. Uh, we would ask that you would not congregate, but simply uh, listen to the social distancing six foot rule or guideline, whichever it is for you. Let us prepare our hearts and minds to hear our Lord speak to us through this prelude music.
As we now enter into the contemplation of the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ and meditate on the salvation of the world through his suffering, death, burial, and resurrection, let us pray. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you send our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. It's good to be with you today. Welcome, welcome to my home. Come, come and sit with me. Today we're going to use our imaginations a little bit. We're going to pretend that we're all sitting here together telling each other about our day. And all of a sudden we hear a knock at the door. So I go to the door. And when I look through the little hole in the door, this is what I see. I see Jesus on the other side of the door. I come back and I share the news with you. Guess who's at the door? It's Jesus. What do you think you tell me to do? That's right, Mackenzie. I think you tell me to go open that door. That's what I would do. I'd open the door and we'd smile and we'd shout at Jesus. We'd tell him how much we love him. We'd say, come Jesus, come, come and sit with us. We've heard so much about you and we wanna learn so much more about you. Come and be with us. We'd be very excited and happy. I think that's how the people in Jerusalem felt the day that Jesus rode into their city on a donkey. He rode through the gates on a donkey, not a horse. No horses were meant for battle, but on a humble donkey. The Bible says that the people, that the crowd gathered and that they spread their cloaks on the ground for the donkey and for Jesus. Now what's a cloak? A cloak is a piece of clothing, much like a coat or a cape or a sweater. And they took their clothing and they put it on the ground so that Jesus could ride on the donkey. The donkey would walk over their clothing. It also says in the Bible that they found branches and they put the branches on the ground. This was the way they greeted someone really important. In this case, this was the way they welcomed Jesus into Jerusalem through those city gates and they welcomed him as their king. It's kind of like a welcome mat at the door. When people see it, it says to them, you're important to me, please come in. That's what the people in Jerusalem were saying to Jesus. And they weren't quiet about it. The Bible also tells us that the people followed him and they shouted, Hosanna to the son of David, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna means save us. Some of the people in Jerusalem knew that Jesus was not only their king, but that he was also their savior. We know that Jesus is our savior, that he died for us, that he rose from the dead, that he went to be with his father in heaven. He did that for you and for me. Palm Sunday is the beginning of a really important week in the life of our church. We call this week Holy Week. Not only do we remember 
that hope, the hope that Jesus brought into Jerusalem on that day as he rode on the donkey. But we will also remember the final meal that he shared with his friends, the disciples. We'll remember how one of his friends betrayed him with a kiss. And we'll remember his death on the cross. Our feelings will turn from happy, excited feelings to very sad feelings. But we know that the greatest hope comes to us on Easter in Jesus's resurrection. And that brings us joy. Just as the people in Jerusalem welcome Jesus into their city, let's remember to make time for Jesus and welcome him in our hearts. Would you pray with me, please? Let's bow our heads. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving us so much and for coming to live among us in the world. Help us remember your love and the hope you bring as we journey with you during Holy Week. Amen. Thank you for joining me, children. Remember, God loves you, and so does your Nativity family. We'll continue with worship. The servant of the Lord expresses absolute confidence in his final vindication, despite the fact that he has been struck and spit upon. This characteristic of the servant played an important role in the early church's understanding of the suffering, death, and resurrection of Jesus. A reading from Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious, I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near, who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. Paul uses an early Christian hymn to help us comprehend Jesus' obedient selflessness on the cross and how God has made Christ Lord over all reality. The perspective of the cross becomes the way we rightly understand God, Christ, our own lives, 
and fellowship within the community of Christ. A reading from Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. The Good News According to Matthew, the 21st chapter. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you'll find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you humble, and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. Blessings to you and peace as we gather together in the name of Jesus Christ. Stained glass, then if you send it to me, I can overlay the... The words. Oh, it's in the, another yeah, it's This recording?
stained glass, then if you send it to me, I can overlay the the words. Oh, it's in the, another yes, it's recording. It's recording. here online on this Palm Sunday. I love Palm Sunday, and I especially loved it when I was young. You see, every Lenten season, we would go to church on Wednesdays and on Sundays, and we had to give up something for Lent. When I was eight years old, I gave up chocolate that year, and then went to church every Wednesday night and every Sunday morning kind of the trifecta of boredom for an eight-year-old boy. But then came Palm Sunday, a kind of a break in the midst of Lent. We sang more upbeat hymns, and those of us who were young got to carry the palms up to the altar where we received a blessing. We sang with the junior choir, and then after the service, in the back, we could hand out the palms to the people. And after we handed out all the palms, the girls would take theirs and start to make them into little crosses. But the guys, we would go outside. Now, what do eight-year-old guys do with long, skinny things with a point on the end? Yep, you got it. Palm sword fights. And we began in earnest to try to swashbuckle each other. Jimmy had stabbed me four times, and I was about to stab him for the next time when my mom came out and said, What are you doing? Don't you know those are church palms? There was no comeback for that. She took me unceremoniously to the back of the station wagon where we opened up the back and set the palms down very carefully as she tried to straighten mine out. And then we went home. And like we did every year, we took the dried palms off of the place where they hung. In my bedroom, it was at the mirror, and we put the new palms there, just so that it would be there touching the cross, the middle of the mirror. I never knew why. After all those years, I still didn't have a real good reason why we did it. I mean, I knew they came from church and that they represented something about Jesus. 
But I was quite a bit older before I really got it. I was visiting a more than 80-year-old homebound member, and I admired a painting that she had with a whole big sheaf of palms behind it. And I said, I see that uh, someone has been bringing palms to you in the last few years. She said, oh yes, but let me show you something. She got on her walker and we made our way very carefully over to her bedroom. She said, there's a huge bureau there. She said, open the bottom drawer. And I did. And inside there was a huge pile of dried palms. She said, that's about 80 years worth. I collect them from all of my family and put them in the drawer. She said, it's so special to me. Now, I'll be honest with you. I thought to myself, this is a major fire hazard. But I didn't say anything. And she said, that drawer reminds me that every year I welcome Jesus into my home. And suddenly I got it. The palms are a reminder of what happened during Holy Week, but also a reminder that we welcome Jesus to come into our own homes. And they're there for the whole year, representing that. This year we may not have palms, but we can still do some things to welcome Jesus in our homes. But let's talk about what happened on that first Palm Sunday more than 2,000 years ago. The crowds that had come from, with Jesus down from Galilee wanted to welcome him into the city of Jerusalem. He had arranged ahead of time to make sure that there would be a donkey for him to ride in on so that he could fulfill the prophet Zechariah, that he would come in humble and in peace, like a king, only a peaceful king. They wanted to make his entry the entry of a king. And so they began to lay down a carpet for him, not a red carpet, but a carpet made out of branches from the trees, according to the scripture, and cloaks from their back. They literally would take off their outer garments and lay them down on the road. Now for peasants from Galilee, many of them only had one cloak, some maybe two. They were difficult to clean, but this was an act of reverence, and they laid theirs down in the dirt so that Jesus could ride in like a king on a carpet. It didn't take long for them to start shouting, Hosanna, save us, heal us, make us whole. Hosanna to the King of Kings. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessings and Hosanna. And the word would get out. And the Roman soldiers and the Roman officials began to worry about this one that others were calling king. You see, people who are in power don't like somebody else to challenge their position of power. And if there was someone in town, especially during this week of the festival, that was challenging their power, they would need to take care of him. As they moved toward the day of Passover, they began to make plans, but not them alone. The religious leaders got in on it too because Jesus had challenged them, and challenged their way of following the law. And so together they made a plan to get rid of this one. Jesus would be betrayed by one of his best friends. He would be deserted by the rest of his best friends. He would go to trial, a mock trial, before Pontius Pilate. And then he would be whipped and beaten. With hardly any strength left, he'd be sent to Herod, who would laugh at him. And then they would place a crossbeam on his shoulders and make him walk the way to the place of his own execution. Jesus would know suffering. He would know fear 
and pain. Jesus, the face of God on earth, would come to understand the absolute fear of death as he hung on the cross. And there he would take all of our pain, take it unto himself, and begin to move into a place where God would enter completely into the sufferings that we all have. The Romans, of course, thought that they had ended the problem. Death has a way of doing that. If Jesus was dead, there was no more problem. But you see, death for God is not the final word. God will never allow death to be the last word. God will always bring life out of the midst of death. But in the midst of all of this, God would enter into our pain in a new and amazing way. So that whenever we were in times of trouble, sadness, fear, and pain, we would know that God is right there with us. Like now, in the time of this virus pandemic, many of us are scared. Many of us aren't sure what's going to happen next. We have isolated ourselves. We're dealing with trying to do schooling at home and the boredom of just being at home. And we're afraid. In the midst of it, we need Jesus. We need to invite him in, not because he's going to wave some magic wand and take it away. Jesus doesn't work like that to invite him right into the midst of our fear, into the midst of our pain, into the midst of our worry, into the midst of our fear of death. Jesus will be here with us, living with us, caring for us, and watching over us. This Palm Sunday, I invite you to join me in welcoming this Jesus into your home. One way we can do it is to recreate some of the events of that first Palm Sunday. We've asked some of you already, and others of you can do it today after you get finished with worship, to go out and get a branch. I picked this one up. It's not too fancy, but it's, it's a branch. And take it and lay it down on the stoop going into your house, right on the welcome mat. Let the whole family do the same, like they lay down the branches in front of Jesus. It can be any kind of branch, maybe one of those nice yellow forsythia right now, or a piece of a pine tree, or a piece of a tree that's about to break into bloom. And then put that outside. But come back inside and go to a closet or a place where you keep your clothes and find some clothing that maybe you just don't wear anymore. Maybe you don't need it anymore. Something that's still good that you could give away. Something that maybe doesn't quite fit right. And gather it up, a piece for each member of the family. And inside the door, lay down those garments for Jesus to enter in. Lay down those garments and then open the door. Gather together. If you're alone, it's okay. You can pray alone. If you have just one other person in the house, get together and hold hands. If it's a whole family, gather together. Time to make a prayer. It doesn't have to sound like my prayer, but let me give you an example. Hosanna, Lord, save us. Heal us, come to be with us. Hosanna, Lord, welcome into our home. Be with us in the midst of our suffering and our fear. Be with us at times when we're not quite sure what to do. Be with us when we begin to become on edge with each other. We ask you, Lord, to come here and be with those who have to come in and go out of this house. For all who go out to 
replenish our necessities, go with them. And those who are essential and have to go out to work, Lord, watch over them. Hosanna, save us, heal us, come and be with us. And when you're done, gather up the clothing. If it's dirty, wash it, but make sure that that clothing is put into a bag. And when we're ready to come back and we can all join together at the church building, we'll bring our bags of Palm Sunday offering, the clothing. We'll bless them and take them out someplace where the clothing is really desperately needed. And then take, take the branch or the branches that you have and maybe tie a little string, put them together and make a little kind of door hanging. Replace what's on your door with these branches that welcomed Jesus. Keep them up for a few days to remind yourself that you have welcomed Jesus into your home. And I know without a doubt that Jesus will come into your home. This is the one who said, Lo, I will be with you always to the very end of time. Jesus will come and be with you. Hosanna to the King of Kings. Hosanna. Praise Jesus. Amen.
Let us profess our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Turning our hearts to God, who is gracious and merciful, we pray for the Church, the world, and all who are in need. God of mercy, send your saving help to all who suffer abuse, insult, discrimination, or contempt. Heal the wounded, comfort the dying, bring peace to those suffering from chronic or terminal illness, tend to all who cry out for relief. We especially lift up in these troubled times those suffering with COVID-19. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Lord of all healing and well-being, you invite us to bring our prayer requests before you. Hear now those requests that we offer. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of all mercy, when we breathe our last, you raise us to eternal life. With all your witnesses in heaven and on earth, let us boldly confess the name of Jesus Christ, our resurrection and our hope. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. For those preparing for baptism and for their sponsors and teachers, hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. For shalom, peace among the nations and forbearance among all people, hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. For the weary health workers and those who are sick in body, mind, or spirit, especially those we name before you at this time, for those who grieve, hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. According to your steadfast love, O oh God, hear these and all our prayers as we commend them to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now let us pray together as our Lord taught his disciples to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from times of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And now may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen.
peace serve the Lord.